go with Jacob to practice this morning. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. It's been a wonderful day. It's been a beautiful day. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, happy Pentecost Sunday to you. Uh, brother, uh, brother Donnie did an, an amazing job talking about the outpouring of the Holy Ghost and the importance of the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to continue our study of overcoming the dragon that we've started. And if you have your Bibles you'd like to turn, we have two places in Revelation chapter 12. We'll be reading verse 3 and verse 9. So let's look at what Revelations 12, 3 and 9 says. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And the great dragon was cast, verse 9, out. The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent, this is identifying who John is seeing, and talking about the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So we see where Satan is working. He's working in the earth today. Amen? And so we're going to talk about this. We started this uh, last week, and we're going to continue looking at the seven heads and what I've been taught they represent might help you understand what's going on in the world today. Let's raise our word in our hands today and let's make our confession. I will believe God's word. I will be who it says I can be. I will do what it says I can do. To God be the glory forever and forever. And everybody shouted amen. Praise God for the power of his word today. We're going to pick up where we left off. And we're going to talk about. I don't know where I put my other, my other Bible, my other word. Uh, we're going to talk about this. The next head that we uh, were discussing. It's the third one in the arrangement. And what I've been taught, and there are different opinions about this, but what I've been taught. In, in my education and in, in the people that have poured into my life that this head represents the next empire that ruled the world and you can find this empire in the book of Daniel and the name of it is the Babylonian Empire and just to give you a little understanding about the Babylonian Empire in Genesis 10 the Bible tells us and Cush begot Nimrod he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom is Babel. This word Babel here is where we later get the word Babylon or the Babylonian Empire. And the word Babel in the Hebrew literally means confusion. And the reason the Lord allowed it to be called confusion is you understand what they were doing during this time, uh, what they were trying to do in, on the earth. Remember, the enemy is in the earth, and he is causing all sorts of confusion and rebellion against God. And so he is using men now to rebel against God. And in Genesis 11, it says, the men got together during this time and said, go to, let us go down. And there, I'm sorry, that, that's what the Lord said. Let us go down and confound their language. When God saw what they were doing, and this is where we get the Tower of Babel and the city of Babel from this word Babel. It's in reference to what they were doing, and it means confusion. They were building a city called Babel, a tower called Babel of confusion. And now in response to that, God is saying, let us go down and there confound their language, confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. He stopped the building of this city of confusion by disconfitting their language so they couldn't communicate. 
and therefore it's called Babel or confusion. Now there is a, a descendant, that city grew into an empire. And now we know it as the empire of Babylon. And we understand in, in Daniel's time how it ruled and they overtook Jerusalem, the two tribes that were left there, Judah and Benjamin. And now they were captives and they, were, they had been taken off in the land of Babylon during Nebuchadnezzar's reign. And now they were in captivity. They weren't in their home anymore. Jerusalem means peace city of peace and and when you hear the word salam or jerusalem it's peace but now they weren't in peace they were in confusion so now you're understanding this this next head this third head on this dragon that represents what the devil is doing in the earth he's trying to re cause people to rebel against god so he can smite the earth with confusion have you ever seen any more confusion than we're living in today so we know the dragon is at work today right but let me, just, let me just show you something in Acts 2. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and the Bible says it's amazing how God used language against the devil to break their, uh, their, their ability to communicate. And you military men know when you can't communicate, when you have no way of communicating, you can't get orders, and you're left out there all alone, and you don't have anybody over you to tell you your next instructions. You just got to try to figure it out yourself. Have you ever been in a situation in regular life that you felt like that communications was cut off with anybody that could really help you in that situation? And it seemed like all the advice that you might be trying to get, it, you didn't understand it. It didn't really apply to what you were going through. And that even made it more worse. And, and, and you didn't feel like that you could find anybody that could talk to you and communicate to you what you need to do, give you direction. Well, God used that kind of confusion to disconfit the builders of the city of confusion, Babel, and the Tower of Babel. And they, it, 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 they were not able to communicate, therefore they were not able to continue to build this city of rebellion against God, all right? So God used language to confound them. And, but listen what the Holy Spirit does in, in Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. This was the 120 believers in the upper room waiting on the promise of heaven, which was the power of the Holy Spirit. Then there appeared to them divided tongues or cloven tongues, different tongues, as a fire and one set upon each of them. So they had the Holy Spirit came like unto fire. And there were, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So here they are receiving the power of the Holy Ghost. And what is the first thing that God touches when He fills them? What does He touch? Their ability to communicate. He touches their language with a holy language. And the power of the Holy Ghost fills them, baptizes them, and they begin to speak with other tongues. Tongues that God gave them the ability when He baptized them with the Holy Ghost to speak in. They were together. They were there praying. They also had business meetings. They cast lot because they had to replace Judas Iscariot and, and Matthias was the one that the lot fell on, and they replaced him. So they, they, they were getting everything together, they were handling their business, and all of this was done because God is the only one, when you seek Him and you do it His way, He's the only one that can give, make sense of anything, and give you direction to make things work, and really cause us to keep in unity because confusion divides, confusion scatters, and there is no pro productivity or fruitfulness when there's a lot of confusion going on. 
So the Holy Spirit comes in and He baptizes their assembly. He baptizes them, gives them the ability to speak in other tongues. All right, let's move on. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they all spake with other tongues as the Spirit gave them. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. Now this is the people that heard what was going on. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance and the ability. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused. Now, this confused them for a moment because everyone heard them speak in his own language. There were all kinds of languages there that day, all kinds of nationalities But when the Holy Ghost filled them, everybody could understand what was going on that was coming out of those Holy Ghost filled 120 saints of God's mouth. There was not only a miracle of speaking that day, but God performed a miracle of hearing because they heard every person speak in his own language. So there was not only a speaking miracle that brought everybody on the same page as to what was going on. And they were confused because they didn't understand how you could do this. They didn't understand how through the power of God, God could let them in on what was going on in the hearts and lives of His people. How many know God wants to tell the world what He is doing in the lives of His people? He wants them to know it. And they were confused about what was happening. They were confused about it because they didn't understand how this miracle, how we could hear them who were speaking in tongues and I'm hearing them in my language and I'm understanding the praises of God that's coming out of their mouth. How could that happen? That's what God does. That's what God does. Satan brings confusion and he causes separation. But God brings understanding and God brings communication and God lets the world know what this is not being done in secret my friend for the last 2,000 years God has been heralding what he has been doing on planet earth out of the mouths of those he has anointed with his spirit and we've been preaching it and singing it for 2,000 years making it understandable, letting people understand God wants you in on this. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be out of confusion and into His peace. He wants you to be a part of this movement. The Bible says, remember we we learned this, how that we are to endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit because there is a force fighting what God is doing. So we have to endeavor, we have to make it a point in our life to do warfare against confusion. Because this is what happens. What happens when you get mad at your wife? You clam up, don't you? Now I didn't say what happens when your wife gets mad at you. That ain't what happens on that side. Men, you know, women, women, they're going to tell you about it. But men, we just go mute. Am I right, guys? Hey, ladies, come on now. Amen, Pastor. You got us right this morning. You got us right. We, we go silent. And then, then all of a sudden, you're, and we all do it, guys. It's just a man thing, you know. And, you know, our wife's over there. I just don't understand about it. And we're over there going, I ain't going to talk about it. I'm just going to go on, and I'm going to hopefully it'll go away. And then that gives an opportunity, (laughs) that gives an opportunity for confusion to begin to work because communication is broke down. And how many know when you can't communicate, a lot of problems start happening? Woo! Now we know military guys have got to communicate. 
and, and James and I were talking about all the sophisticated communication, drones and things like that, but how many knows there, there, are, there are weapons out there that can cause internets to go down and power grids to go down and confuse all of our modern communications and what are we going to do when we don't have boots to put on the ground with like, he was talking about guns with real bullets. I sure am glad, Brother James, they figured out they need real bullets in those guns, right? You need some real bullets in those guns. You don't need blanks because this ain't no game. And, and I'm going to tell you, politicians need to quit playing, right? Come on, guys. Politicians need to quit playing with this because it ain't no game. It's real. And listen to me. Church politicians need to quit playing religion with this thing called spiritual warfare because it ain't no game. And are we loaded with blanks? Are we loaded with the Holy Ghost fire of God? So He gave us fire. And that fire and that anointing gives us the ability to communicate. And so we need the, the communication the ability that the Holy Spirit gives us to communicate. Brother Donnie said it so good. He said he don't like to speak to crowds. And man, I mean, God chased me for six years because I hated it. And he says, you're going to preach? I said, no, I am not doing this. But he helped me understand that it wasn't me. I just needed to be the vessel that the Holy Ghost could speak through. And I just needed to get myself out of the way because we shall receive power after the Holy Ghost shall come upon us, and He will give us ability to speak His Word. God equips His soldiers with everything they need. All the power and the arsenal. He gives us by way of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. He gives us the equipment through the power of His Spirit. And that power has the power to destroy confusion. Because Confusion causes a lot of problems. Confusion is lack of understanding. Confusion is uncertainty and unsureness. Confusion is defined as a situation of panic, breakdown of order, disorder, disarray. A disorderly jumble is one uh, definition of confusion. A muddle. Now, we don't use muddle. That sounds kind of English to me, you know. You gotta be from England to say, Oh, you have a muddle in this place. How many of you guys said, Man, this room is a muddle? You know, my office is a muddle, you know, my car is a muddle, my porch is a muddle, my yard's a muddle, a mess. You know, we don't use that word. We say mess. Everybody shout mess. That's confusion. A mess is confusion. God doesn't want our life to be a mess because it gives way to confusion and disorder. And we don't fall under leadership. We don't fall under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. God gave us the Holy Ghost to work in our life to clear up all of our confusion. More than likely, if we're confused, something is wrong. Something is wrong. We need to invite the Holy Spirit to come in and clear up our confusion and give us direction for our life. Not a jumble, not a muddle, not a mess. Not a disorderly life, but a life with order and unity and, and fulfillment and certainty and not panic and break down. That's all weapons the enemy through confusion wants to use. And we can see the breakdown. There's more confusion. People don't even know what sex they are anymore. I know I was born this, but I want to be born that. That's all a, a seed of confusion. Anything out of the order God has spoken in His Word is confusion. And it can be our marriage. It can be other things. It don't have to be the radical things, the, the bizarre things. You know, most, most of us may not be struggling with that kind of stuff, but it's disorder and confusion in practical things. Things that we understand. Things that affect our life. We saw this on TV. And it's bizarre and kind of, you know, ludicrous in our mind. And that don't really affect us. We think, you know, oh, God, fix that. But that's not the biggest problem. That really don't affect you the most. What affects you the most is the people you love and the house you live in. Amen? Church you go to and relationships that you have. Your business is all that. 
Satan, he, he wants that confusion there where it affects you. But oh, hallelujah, if you get the power of the Holy Ghost at work in our lives, he will drive confusion out and bring unity, understanding. Being baffled. Now that's a word I use a lot. Baffled. I am baffled about this. Now it don't take much to baffle me. I really need the Holy Ghost because I get bewildered over a lot of stuff. Now brother Donnie, I don't know about you, you're talking about putting stuff together this morning and you know you have a few parts left over. I don't usually get that far. You know, where they, you put it all together and there's a few parts left over. I usually put it together and halfway through I realize that's upside down. Like the chain, you remember on the, on the chainsaw, trying to cut trees down with the chain on backwards? Yeah, that was me. And it took me a half a day of trying to saw trees down with the chain going the wrong way to find out, man, I put this thing on backwards. Well, I've learned from that lesson, and I checked the chain before I try to cut trees down. Bewildered, I was totally baffled why that chain was not working. Well, it was turned around wrong. I was confused. I put things together wrong. No, I did not read the instructions. No, I did not see how the manual said to do it. I just said, look, man, I can do this. Bless God, I got the Holy Ghost. But I forgot to ask the Holy Ghost his opinion about it. You know what he would have probably said? He'd have said, Go read the instructions. You know, and that's what way some people do with their Bible. They say, Holy Ghost, what do I do about this? He said, Well, why don't you read your Bible? You know, I can't bring it to you, remember, if it's not in there the first time. So he said, He shall bring all things into our remembrance. He'll bring all, he'll make us recollect, but it's I gotta put it in there, right? So not reading the instructions, the Holy Ghost was sitting there saying, you dummy. Yeah, he calls me that sometimes because he knows I know it. He says, you should have read the instructions and then I could have told you, you know, I can remind you, page two said, don't put the chain on backwards like that. So we get bewildered, we get baffled. And James says this in James 3, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth, Notice he's saying, in contrary to the truth, the Word of God, you're going against the Word of God, and these things are in your heart. This wisdom descendeth not from above, this didn't come from God, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion. Everybody shout confusion. Where there's envy and strife, what are, he said, where, where he gives this, this a, a landing strip. Just, just think about, we were talking about having to fly. We're talking about having to fly. And, uh, you know, going to places and flying and not liking to fly. And y'all going to get used to that, you know, whether you like it or not. When you get on an airplane and you, you have to fly and uh, you have to have a landing strip. You have to have a landing strip to take off and you have to have a landing strip to land. And here he is saying that you provide a landing strip for confusion when there is envy and strife. It does not come from the Holy Spirit. It is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Now, where is the dragon working today? The Bible said he was cast out of heaven. He's not up there working, right? Where is he today? Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, the Bible says. For Satan has come down unto you with much wrath because he knows his time is short. And so he knows he don't have much time, so he's working hard in the earth with great wrath. And one of the things he's trying to do is trying to find a landing strip to land all of his junk into your life. And he's looking for that landing strip that envy and strife provides a way for confusion. He says where these two things are, there is confusion. And every evil work. See how it starts off? Envy. Then strife. You pave in that little platform for it to land. Then comes confusion. And then before you know it, it starts off and it don't seem so bad when it's 
just envy. That's kind of a private thing. And then there's strife. And that's when you kind of get into it with each other. It starts off envy inside, strife outside. Strife is when you're into it with somebody or some people and, and you're on the opposite and you're at it with each other. And he says this is earthly, sensual, and devilish. And then the Bible says, then comes confusion. Confusion is the falling apart of everything. The disarray, the bewilderment, the panic, all the things that are not of God. It begins to work. And then before you know it, it blows completely out of this world to every evil work. It started way back there when it didn't seem to be so bad. But that wasn't taken care of. And it grew, 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 grew. Became strife. And you begin to blow up on each other and blow up on people and come apart on people. And then confusion comes in and all of that stuff begins every evil work. It is a breeding ground for everything. You know, we like to just pick the sins that, that don't apply to us, but it applies to other people. He's not talking about that. He's not talking about your pet peeve. He's talking about everything. Everything blows up here when we give that kind of ground in our life, confusion. But let me tell you, the Holy Spirit can blow that up. He can completely dismantle and destroy every evil work because He sent us the power of the Spirit to do that. And this is what He says, but where envy and strife is, there is confusion. But the wisdom that is from above, would you come Jacob? I'm closing. Is first pure. Notice the difference in what God does and what the devil wants to do. What gives the devil place and what gives the Holy Ghost place. He says, it's wisdom. It's from above. It's the truth of God's Word. Never changes. When you stop believing this, that's when you get real trouble. Oh, wow. You get real trouble. You get in real trouble when you vary and stray from the Word of God. It says, but wisdom that is from Him, from above. This is pure first, pure, peaceable. Wow, listen. Gentle. Easy to be entreated. Easy to be gotten along with. Full of mercy. It's not sitting back saying, I'm hurt, I'm going to hurt you. Mercy is, I'm hurt, but I'm going to forgive you for it. That's God's way. Forgive your spouse. Forgive your wife, your husband. Forgive that child that's hurt you. Forgive that parent that's hurt you. There's children that grew up hating their parents by the way they were raised or treated. And they may have been, they may have had to grow up in a terrible situation. But it, I want to tell you, it doesn't hurt them. It hurts me if I grow up like that and I hold this in me, this, this unforgiveness. And only, you say, I can't do that. You're right, you can't. The Holy Ghost, that power helps me do something that I cannot do. He wouldn't have sent it if I could do it, right? He wouldn't have sent it if you could do it. But the Holy Spirit helps me get to a place that I can show mercy. If you, you remember the speaker Sunday night at the youth, she said, hurt people hurt people. Isn't that right? They go around hurting everybody because they still inside have not come to that place of pureness, peacefulness, gentleness, easiness of being treated or entreated and full of mercy. Mercy is not what you do to me. It's what I give to you. It's what I can do for you. Remember envy and strife. It started there. Now we're in full of mercy. Good fruits. Man, my life is being healed. The Holy Spirit's helped me come to a place out of that all of that confusion. Now, my life, I can understand it. Because God is now beginning to heal me. On the inside, my mind and my spirit and, and, and my, my, my innermost being is being healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's power to do supernatural things that I don't usually have by the working of the Holy Spirit. Without partiality, without hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness is sown. Listen to what he's saying. God's put something in me 
that I can sow into somebody else. Now I'm not a hurt person going around sowing hurt. Now I'm not an angry person going around sowing anger. Now I'm not an unforgiving person going around sowing unforgiveness. Do you, do you understand this morning? Do you see what God's doing? Now I'm a person that's forgiven going around forgiving. I'm a person that knows he's loved of God. He's got the love of God. The Bible says the love of God. Romans 5, thank you, Holy Ghost, is shed abroad in each of us by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit's just filling me with love. And now I can, I know that he's filled me with God's love and I'm loved and now I can sow righteousness. I can sow love. And the Bible says it's not just money that he's talking about, Luke. 638 he is also talking about what you do in other things just like we're talking about right here sowing stuff sowing attitude sowing things into people and he says all of this is done because of the work of God in our life that is from above it's he said righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace you know we peacemakers because God's called us. I don't live in Babylon. I'm not a resident of Babylon. Do you know you are not a As a believer, as a born-again Christian, you do not live. You're not a citizen of Babylon. The Bible says our citizenship, the English, uh, the, the uh, old word is, in the King James, is our conversation, our conversation is in heaven. That word there is translated from the word that means citizenship. Greek word citizenship. He said that our citizenship is in heaven. So I'm not a citizen of Babel. That's not my home. That's not my city. That's not my tower. You know who your tower is? Our God is a strong and mighty tower. He's my tower now. My city is the holy city, Jerusalem. We are citizens of heaven. And that word Jerusalem, it is the city of peace. And guess what? Jesus is coming and his title will be King of Peace. Lord of Lords and King of Peace. Let's all stand together this morning. I want what God has for me. And he gives it today. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for everything that you said and everything that you have done in this service this morning to heal. Lord God, you've helped people who are suffering. You've helped people who have been hurt to heal. And a healed person can sow healing in other people. A blessed person is blessed to be a blessing. They can sow blessing. A person, Lord God, that is healed of anger, healed of strife, healed of confusion, and is filled with peace and pureness, which is from above, truth. We can sow the truth. And Lord, people can know the truth. And when we sow the truth, you said, you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It will set you free. Lord God, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for healing us from the inside in the de deepest recesses of our life. God, I thank you for your miracle work and power. God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit, His work in our life to bring healing, power, and strength, to give us the ability to do what we are incapable of doing in our own fleshly self. God, thank you for delivering us from Babel, from the power of the dragon, from the power of confusion. And God, if there's anybody today that's battling confusion and they're ready to see God heal it and bring peace and tranquility into their life, I pray right now they'll just believe God for it, ask God for it, ask the Holy Spirit to come on the scene in their life and begin to manifest His presence and watch what God will do to, to, to absolutely destroy all their confusion and bring righteousness and pureness into their life again in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I wonder if while every head's bowed and every eye's closed, you're here this morning.
and you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you want to do that right now, we're going to pray a prayer. If you're here, when we all pray, I want you to pray. And I want you to believe it. The Bible says repent. Repent of your sins. Be converted. And then be baptized. If you haven't been baptized in water, it's important. And he says, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right, let's pray. Everybody just say this with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins. Lord, I want to turn to you. God, my life's a mess. But I've heard how your word can take a mess like me and turn it into something beautiful when you begin to work. Lord Jesus, I believe in your salvation. I believe that you came, you were crucified, you were buried, and you rose again. I believe that with all of my heart. And Lord God, I want you to save me today. I accept you as my Lord. I accept you as my God. I accept you as my Savior. And I want to make that commitment to you today that you change my life and fill me with your Holy Ghost so that I can have the power to do what I otherwise cannot do. And I accept this and receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. While every head's bowed and every eye's closed, you're here this morning and you've never prayed that prayer, but this morning you've prayed it, you meant it, and this morning, you feel like you've given your life to God. I want you to raise your hand and say, I have given my life this morning to Jesus for the first time. I have surrendered my life to His salvation so that I can know that I have a home in glory. Thank you, Lord God, for everything that you've done this morning. God, we thank you for our time together. We pray, God, that you would keep your hand upon every person and bless every house in this building in Jesus' name. Amen. You ready for the blessing of the Lord? Let's speak it over your life today. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make His face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up His countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. And everybody shouted amen. Amen.